World of Warcraft's most famous and infamous players, part 5. I actually haven't watched part 1 to 4, <laughs> but uh, this video just got released, so I wanted to watch it. It's by Matt Season. Let's check it out. Ooh, what is that picture? Okay. Six years ago, is that when he started the series? I've never watched any of these. Uh, All right, comes up. Ready, guys. Let's do this. Uh, Leroy! Oh, yeah! Leroy! Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my Funeral crashes. Oh. Erotic deep run tram roleplay. What? It, Wait, hold up. Okay. As World of Warcraft approaches its 20 year anniversary, Volume, is it too loud? hundreds of legends have come and gone. However, neither positive or negative. Wait. Oh, God damn it, I want to see this. Can't help it posting impassionately when they don't care. Posting nothing they say you ignore. Posting with passion you incite trolls. Posting with fluff you say nonsense. Post with what facts you have. They've whittled down the rationale. There is no whim. There is only slow degradation. Take note. It is the it is the only and f first time and only time you'll see someone in my position. You can be me when I'm gone. I'm actually not sure what that's from. Ghost crawler? What persists are the marks that they've left behind. Welcome to the fifth installment of World of Warcraft's Ooh. most famous and infamous players. Okay. Fantron, thank Ooh. you for the sub. 28 months. Okay. I wonder who's gonna be in Stack up for the meteor. In, in, in. Stack, 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 now. Oh, Wait, no. I'm not oh, no. Zeliac is... Tiny violin. Zeliac is in the wrong spot. Who's on Zillay? Feeny, move it. Yeah, you're fucking wrong loser. Taunt Zillay and run it away. Run Zillay away. Oh fuck, fuck. Was that the wrong corner? Did Teeny just do oh, that? Oh fuck. Yeah, he did. Oh fuck, I had the wrong corner. Between private God. servers and official re-releases, yeah. Vanilla World of Warcraft has to be one of the most relaunched or remixed games of True. all time. And in 2023, Blizzard would launch an official hardcore server. Yep. The major difference being as simple as it is daunting. Yep. If you die once, that's it. No corpse walk, no spirit res, mm -hmm. whether it be from overconfidence, fun. a duel to the death, or bullshit disconnects. Real fun. Oh, oh. shit. Oh my god. Ooh. Oh, don't you dare, dude. Come on. I I'm remember the era of anymore. hardcore clips. Oh! Oh! If. God. I'd like to thank you guys for checking out my stream tonight. <laughs> um, I love this game, it's my favorite. I, uh, I'm actually gonna take a two year break. If you die, every item uh, and all the gold on that character can be considered gone forever. I think I miss hardcore, it was so fun. Ty again, thank you for the 57, 60, 50, 57 months, thank you. Even if it's at the hands, not from a mob or an internet connection from 2004, but rather, a supposed ally mm. even if you're level 60 and even if you're in the final raid tier for all of vanilla these official yep. servers were inspired by the community with yep. a self-imposed rule set and an add-on to moderate them cool. and in july of 2023 the guild hardcore elite were making their first attempt at the final boss of the death Ooh. nightwing the four horsemen this fight would prove to be one of the most intimidating as one screw up by a single person could potentially wipe the raid. Yep. It's a four boss fight where each horseman periodically applies a unique AoE dot that stacks onto everybody within mm. 40 yards. And at a certain point, it becomes unhealable. So the strategy to beat them Good is enough. for the entire raid, tanks, healers, and DPS, is to play merry-go-round, moving from one boss to another mm. before their stacks get too high. It requires a lot of coordination some believe it to be the most complex fight in all of vanilla yep. and also execution and it's a good fight. in general it's extremely unforgiving for mistakes 
especially if a tank dies, as the boss will then run around the room and stacking the stock onto everyone, loose. which renews debuffs that are about to expire, and screwing up the entire rotation in the process. And with death now being permanent, the stakes were high to say the least. Un and one more thing is that it is one of the only bosses in vanilla where you cannot petri out. It is not petriable. Fortunately for Hardcore Elite, they had an extra secret debuff. Tiny has to be a psycho psycho psychopath in order to build up trust for so long just to do something like this. Allegedly, he had been playing with this team of raiders and this guild for over a year. And you know what the most messed up thing? He even played Scribble IO with them. Every evening, they had Scribble IO. It's messed up. A hidden affix in the form of a player with less than pure intentions. Yeah. And so begins the story of Tiny Violin, a player spurned, according to him, by being cheated out of Scarab Lord and Atish yeah. by a corrupt loot council. This T Tiny Violin, he's he's a character, okay? But prior to hardcore uh, <sighs> being out, uh, I remember seeing clips of him having... Um, Eight accounts in classic era or vanilla, whatever the heck, sitting on with a max level priest sitting on every single horde hearthstone area where people go to to dispel people with Songflower. Ogremar, Thunderbluff, Kargath, Crossroads, Undercity, every single inn you would have a hearthstone to, he had a dispel already. That he, he's a committed person. You can say what you want about Tiny Violin, but he's committed. Along with, as he claims, the guilt cheating the rule set yeah. of the self-imposed challenge would be the reason for what he called Judgment Day. Judgment he had Day. been with the guild for a year at this point, and during that fateful raid night, oh, as they no. attempted their pull, Tiny Violin, who was tanking at the time, intentionally pulled one of the horsemen into the wrong corner, throwing the entire encounter into disarray and You're killing 36 control. people in the process. Oh, fuck, fuck, was that the wrong corner? Did the just do oh, that? Fuck. Yeah, he did. Oh fuck, oh. I had the wrong corner. Oh. As this wasn't controversial enough, this event would start another controversy of its mm -hmm. own within the community, as the, the deaths appeals. were shortly appealed and petitioned to be reset due to yeah. griefing. Those killed had their characters reinstated to them, and the community would be split on this decision, with some supporting it in order to yeah, it was like a future 50 -50. And others disagreeing as it bended the rule set of yeah. death is death, period. But little I hate, did they know. I, I hate grieving, but I won't deny this was hilarious the way he was acting. As bad as, as bad as it sounds, man, all the griefing clips and all the griefing stuff that happened was a big reason why hardcore became as popular as it did. Because there were so many eyes on it. Oh my god, did you hear that? This hunter has been griefing Crossroads for days. Oh my god, have you heard that the Joker died in Burning Steppies to... I don't remember it. Uh, Corone, I think. Oh my god, Corone killed Joker again. You know, there was so many, like... So much stuff go going out there and it brought Hardcore to so many people. It sucked if you got grief, but it was a big reason why Hardcore became as, as popular. A part of the reasons, right? This would not be the last that they had seen. It was the money rune in Burning Stebbies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of Tiny Violin. Months later, on. he had secretly gotten into the guild under another name. They were getting ready to pull the final boss of the Ankaraj raid, Cthulhu, mm -hmm. who has a mechanic where he will eye beam, which chains to other nearby players and increasing in damage. This mechanic begins immediately, so pulling oh. has to be done in a very careful way mm. with the tank charging alone to take the first oh. beam and then the raid following a safe distance behind while going over strategy he mm. pulled in without warning instantly killing 13 people in the process again oh. do not run in with me wait wait oh my god oh, oh, patrick everyone 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 what oh, oh my god he's all into the dive wait Oh, and so, my God. a true anime villain was born. He began to play the game in a very different way by multiboxing 16 accounts and camping them throughout the world. And oh, I thought it was eight. 
It was 16 accounts, guys. Yeah. At various spots to dispel unsuspecting raiders of their buffs. He would even go as far to claim that he had been in contact with a Blizzard developer and he was one mm -hmm. of the reasons that Blizzard released the Chrono Boon item in 2019 Classic, which allowed players to safely store their buffs. Okay. Reaction to his story are extremely polarized. Some are angry, mm. some are amused, some look at him as a hero, others as a villain. But whatever the I case, he certainly earned the title of one of the more infamous players of recent day. Me. I just think it's crazy that you can commit over a year to that just like you're befriending all these people you're hanging out with them you're chilling you're chatting just to do that oh my god like a year wait oh wait oh oh patrick, 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 patrick patrick everyone everyone everyone, everyone. that's a long time what? oh my Fucking god way. all right what's the next one Oh, wow, hops! Money oh, now we're going to like a more, more, uh, what is it called? Wholesome one. I loved wow, hops, man. Simcath, it's a 10 minute run. This is, uh, basically oh. uh, what I've been doing for a while. It's this is, a, this is uh, wholesome. It's a power level where I basically get all the good loot and they so get sick. all the great experience. Never watched him. I think he plays Hearthstone nowadays. On a more wholesome note, when World of Warcraft yeah. was released in 2004, social media was still in its infancy, Large and therefore fun. so too were its content creators. Mm -hmm. And even still, May those die. who did exist were more PvP-centric, uploading their compilations to the popular website Warcraft, Warcraft movies. movies. When YouTube launched in 2007, along with the game's first expansion, The Burning Crusade, one <laughs> A 10-minute run through Scarlet Monastery, killing every mob, a lot like Leroy Jenkins, but I live. Great way to farm and power level friends, alt and guildies. World of Warcraft ponage. <laughs> no hacks, no cheats, no exploits. Oh my god. Top 10 videos I liked this week on YouTube. Look how different YouTube was, man. What What is this? Oh my lord. That is so... Wow. One of the very first content creators would make their debut. A player by the name of Wow Hobbs, he was ahead of his who time, didn't though. showcase his prowess in PvP, but instead, in power leveling. The Hobbs way of pulling, as he called it, would involve gathering up all of the mobs inside Damn. of a low-level dungeon and AoEing them all down at once yep. in order to power level. His Looks videos like were guide-based, sharing his experience, tips, and tricks, and were characterized by his humor, enthusiasm, yeah. and deep knowledge of the game quickly garnering him a dedicated following and earning oh him God. the title of one of the very first World of Warcraft content creators. He would show, at the time, a unique and unconventional way of playing the game by soloing through these low-level dungeons so and cool. providing quick XP for the levelers in his party mm. and also a lucrative way to farm gold. These videos would stand out in a sea of PvP compilations that dominated yeah. the scene and pioneered an entire genre of entertainment. The online personality, where That's he cool. would also provide class guides, parodies, and updates on the latest developments within the World of Warcraft universe. Mm -hmm. His videos appealed to a wide audience, from Man. hardcore players seeking advanced strategies to casual fans looking for entertainment and guidance. I thought it was cool. Over the always... years, Hobbs has established himself as one of the more respected and beloved figures within the World of Warcraft community. Yep. While the landscape of online gaming. And... Oh my god. Sorry, I, I just gotta look at like, it's just YouTube, man. It's so different. God. And content creation has evolved since his debut. His influence and impact within the World of Warcraft community remains significant to this day, okay. where he continues to produce content, this is engage with his audience, and contribute to that is the Hubs. vibrant gaming community that he helped shape over the years. Okay. <laughs> the year is 2008. Dude, I love... You can see the Mountain Dew. You can clearly tell it's a Mountain Dew. There's the Pringle cans. By the way, Pringles literally... I might even... It, it's actually F tier. It's the worst chips you can get. It's not even classified as chips, I think. 
Pringles suck. They're so overrated and so bad. Like, I, I cannot even believe that some people would think that that's their favorite chips in the world. So bad. You know what? If you want to get some good chips, guys, get some kettle cooked salt and vinegar chips. Oh, or some sour cream and onion. Woo! Now we're talking chips. But Pringles, get the hell out of here, man. The year is 2008. Kettle chips with Breath S here. The Lich King expansion is brand new. Ooh. And World of Warcraft is at the height of its popularity. Mm. However, with great power comes great responsibility. Yep. As with success comes with the opportunity for theft, Ooh. robbery, and pilferage. As the game grew in popularity, so too did the ways in which players' accounts were stolen. I got hacked back in 2009 because I got an email telling me that uh, I need to update my password. And I had to click a link to update my password to make sure that it wasn't gonna get stolen. Little did I know that it wasn't an actual legit Blizzard website and I lost all my shit. Got my account back a few, I think, months later after a lot of tedious back and forth with the Blizzard, uh, you know, emails and whatnot. And every single one of my characters were naked and had nothing on them. I did recover some of my items and some of the things that I had lost. But the thing I'm the most pissed about losing was the Arcanite Ripper on my warrior. You know the weapon that looks like a guitar, like the axe guitar from Karasan? They got them sold it, dude. They got them sold it, man. I was just minding my own business, doing hey. a little research online, and somehow my account got hacked. That's the power that this game had. In the mid-2000s, people were after your credit card number, banking mm. information, social security number, and your World of Warcraft account. The fuck? Ah! Oh, I remember this, I think. What the fuck? <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> yeah, the fuck? Oh. Have you ever been so pissed off that you unlocked your potential as a death metal singer? Fuck! You his heard. friend is loving it. You saw the little smile on his face? Oh, he's loving it. It was the death knell of one of the millions of victims uh, of account theft. He's loving it. Or so he thought. Unbeknownst to him, he was merely the victim. Instead, a prank by his friends who logged into his account and yeah. changed his password uh, to give him the impression okay, that, that he was one of the many affected by a recent rash of compromised accounts. Okay. It quickly he's spread across the internet and has become one of the more popular World of Warcraft related videos to this day. Gosh, it's not even fucking working now! Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! Oh shit, man. I'm supposed to be farming archaeology right now, man. Come on, dude. Alright. Ooh. What are you doing on your, on your years of you? Just, just relax. Wait, or... that is the yeah. guy from the the band. Yeah, you know, I'll spend time with my daughter. Corpse so, Grinder. Uh, uh, wife and daughters go to Disney, do some fishing, uh, grilling, watching American football. You know, drinking, playing World of Warcraft. Oh shit. Corpse Grinder. No, that's not a character name. Damn. Rather, it's a death metal singer, George Fisher, of the band Cannibal Corpse. Yep. As it turns out, death metal singers were no more immune to the addiction sweeping the world as any other. Undead male and mage, when he wasn't probably. busy singing about cutting off people's heads, he was actually doing it in World of Warcraft. A hobby, as it turns out, he's quite passionate for. And, and I'll talk about Warcraft all fucking night, dude. But, hey, I have four accounts. It ain't like I don't four? play. I have a 70 Hunter, a 70 Rogue, a 70 fucking Warrior, Prot Warrior, because there ain't no other way to be. <laughs> yeah, brother, we don't play the goddamn... We don't do the dual wheel. We do the shield and the sword. 
and what other uh, uh, 70 I got? Oh, Priest, Undead. One wouldn't really <laughs> think that death metal and MMORPGs really have an intersection, so many were surprised to learn that George was an avid fan of Blizzard's 2004 cool. hit, as he revealed in a 2007 heavy metal interview, and he yeah. had a lot to say about his time in Azeroth. Stop going to the fucking elemental plateau gagging people! I'm trying to get notes of air! Nobody else in the band plays Warcraft, because <laughs> we probably will never do an album. You know, I swear, and I wouldn't do this, but there are times when I get ganked, where somebody fucking kills my guy, and I'm like, if I could just reach through the computer, I would punch that motherfucker's lights out right now. The interview was quickly shared across social media, and it really showed that all walks of life played the game. Oh, from 10-year-olds, to soccer moms, to uh, death metal singers. Dude, it's so weird, man. Imagine imagine you're <laughs> you're playing World of Warcraft, you're ganging someone, and on the other side there's, there's this like, Cannibal Corpse main singer, Corpse Grinder, man. It hooked everyone, it you, seemed. You know what kills me the most? Is all these fucking hunter elves you see, and they're all like Legolas, but it's all spelled wrong. Fuck off! That's fucking Lord of the Rings! He would even perform True. that at the in 2011, and he still plays to this day, oh as far God. as everyone knows. But due to the demands of his band and his personal life, he can't get as much game time in as he'd like to. Today, when he isn't performing, he's honing his proficiency in claw machines oh. and donating the prizes to charities around the world. Alright, so we went from World of Warcraft to, uh, to claw machines. Uh, uh, connection on tour, I get really pissed off. <laughs> I get fucking really mad, man. I'm serious. There's a lot to do, man. There's <laughs> motherfuckers to kill, you know? I don't like playing PvP a lot, but you know. Oh, shit. All right. Oh, what's this? Joanna. Oh, shit. What is the point of a video game? You start yeah. from square one and slowly unravel the story. One of the goats. Progressing your character along one the way, the as well as your skill, and watching an ending credits roll. It's enough to mm. satisfy most, but for some, the first thing that they do after watching the credits is to go again. But this time, a little faster. True. As social media has flourished over the years, so too has the speedrunning community. Groups of people yeah. gathered around thousands of different games with one simple goal. Beat it as fast as possible. Speedrunning. Still, long before this ideal environment was created, there's a man who did the unthinkable. Not only did he level from 1 to 60 in vanilla World of Warcraft, yeah. he did it faster than anyone else on the planet several Very times. Fast. And so begins the story of Joanna. His speedrunning escapades started long before World of Warcraft, however, mm. as far back as seven years old in 1987, and speedrunning Quake in the 90s, and even publishing the first ever recorded Castlevania IV speedrun yeah. in 1999. As far as World of Warcraft is concerned, his story begins in its infancy in vanilla, and quickly gaining recognition for his speedrunning yeah. strategies. Peo and... said he used his guides back then? Bro, I did not back in 2006 because I probably didn't even know how to use a guide at that point. I was, you know, very young. But when I started playing uh, Nostalgias, man, I, I used Joanna's guide. That That's how I, like, learned how to level, literally. I, I, I learned which zones to go to and everything like that through Joanna. I, and I think a lot of people did too. Completing the leveling process in record time, his detailed guides and videos on efficient leveling routes and tactics prime? attracted a large following of players eager to optimize their own leveling experiences. Today, I think it's harder to appreciate just how helpful this was as yeah. questing and leveling have become much more understood and less intimidating. Mm. But in the culture of the early MMOs, leveling to the max period, regardless of the speed, was a pretty daunting task. So his guides were a lifesaver for it, those. It was, man. Like, I know a lot of people actually printed out a physical copy of his guides. Same thing as when you would play GTA and you would write down the cheat codes on a sheet of paper, right? who ran into trouble. One of his most notable achievements came in 2006. I did, yeah. When he set the world record for the fastest time to reach level 60. This accomplishment solidified his reputation as one of the most skilled and dedicated players within the community. It's insane. Throughout the years, he continued to create content focused on World of Warcraft, including leveling guides, mm -hmm. strategy videos, and gameplay commentary. Yeah, and contour. his dedication to the game and his willingness to share his knowledge with others earned him a loyal fan base and recognition True. for one of the more iconic players to have played the game. And 
pioneering what was then a, bit of his time. a unique and difficult form of challenge. He continued to participate in various WoW events and competitions and mm -hmm. remained an active member within the community until, due to a heart condition, he sadly passed away in April of 2024, yeah. leaving in his wake a unique legacy Last and month. memories that many today look back to fondly. Yeah. Joanna was definitely uh, one of the goats, man, of the World of Warcraft creators, for sure. Yeah, hearts in the chat for Joanna. What's this? Oh, time lost. Oh, no? Are we farming time lost? Or is it, um... Wreckful! Oh, shit. When thinking of personalities within the World of yeah. Warcraft community, it's hard to not Clues immediately think of Wreckful. Yeah. Wreckful began playing World of Warcraft in its early years, but his history with MMOs first began in Ashram's Call, where he quickly became dominant in the game's PvP system. Mm -hmm. And when World of Warcraft released in 2004, he would join the millions of others in exploring the world of Azeroth. Yeah. And he hated it. In fact, he never made it past level 30, as he found the questing to be too boring to be bothered with, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until the game's first expansion, the Burning Crusade, with the release of the competitive arena system, that he would become engulfed into the addiction sweeping the world, yeah. having been given an account by his friend, a lot of which held a level 70 well. rogue, named Wreckful. Similarly to Ashram's Call, he quickly rose to prominence as one of the game's top PvPers, yep. specializing in the rogue class in particular, and achieving high rankings in PvP. Popping off. Not just in the Burning Crusade, but... Not a WoW legend, not just a WoW legend, a literal Twitch pioneer. Yeah, I mean, he he was... Would I say the first, like, really big streamer? I mean, probably. Yeah. Throughout all of the game's history. I, when I think, like, on the surface big level, streamers. Yeah, I, I think PvP probably he was. Warcraft seems to be quite a simple thing. Like, genuine you big kill streamer. kill the enemy players while keeping your allies alive. Yeah, he, he was the one that essentially invented donations yeah like taking getting getting money taking a donation and then getting tts or whatever the hell I mean, if, but as you climb rank it's crazy you realize just how much depth there is between crowd control communication cooldown management mm -hmm. target switching and so on only those with the ability to make quick decisions and with a deep knowledge and understanding of every single matchup were the arena man find success <laughs> and wreckful was successful to say the least yeah he first uploaded to the popular Warcraft movies PvP yeah. Hub and later YouTube, his videos quickly garnering millions upon millions of views from Crazy. the community. Along with friends, he would compete in esports tournaments around the game, months. teaming up with other similarly extremely skilled players, and even became the first player ever to hit 3,000 rating in the game's arena mode. Dude, and 117 wins and 4 losses. That's actually insane. While many would initially be drawn to him for his skill in PvP, they would stay for his entertaining personality and insightful commentary. Yeah. He would quite frequently offer a view into his personal life with his viewers, mm -hmm. who soon began to learn more about the man behind the rogue, and it would be inevitable that he would venture beyond the confines of the game and forging his path yeah. into the broader realm of content creation. His meow on the shirt, the meow shirt. I think I have one of those actually in my in my closet somewhere. Just about gameplay, it was of entertainment, filled with. No, laugh. I don't have the meow one. I have the sheet, the one with the little penguin where it says sheet. <laughs> I have one of those. After drama, and heartfelt moments, from epic arena matches to unfortunate yeah. mishaps, his streams were a roller coaster ride of highs and lows, and turning into something of a gathering where mm -hmm. gamers from all walks of life came together to share their passion for this virtual realm and quickly yeah. making him one of the first big streamers on Twitch. Yep. Amidst these chaotic adventures, he embarked on a quest for balance in his personal life mm -hmm. and shared struggles with mental health issues such He's as very anxiety open about it, actually. and depression and used Extremely his platform open. to shed light on the importance of mental wellness. Yeah. Damn. 31. Man, I'm almost, I'm almost 31. Tragically, in July of 2020, Wreckful would lose his battle against depression 
forever leaving Jeez. a void, not just awesome. within the World of Warcraft community, but also the content creation industry and gaming sphere at large. Players he actually made Forzen go outside. Like that that's <laughs> that's pay impressive. And tribute to him in the Stormwind Cathedral, where in a rare moment both the Horde and Alliance agreed to peace in mutual mm. respect and tribute to one of the most iconic that's and an impactful yeah. players of the game. His death had a profound impact on his fans and the online yeah. community and sparked discussions about mental health awareness and support within the gaming and streaming industry. And he's remembered today for not just his PvP prowess, but also his competitive nature mm -hmm. and the impact he left on the game, its players, and the community who watched him. Yep. Massive impact. Famous, mm. infamous, wholesome, controversial, yeah. whatever the case may be, World of Warcraft's intriguing legacy isn't defined by its lore, world, or even its gameplay as yeah. much as it is by the people who played it. Oh yeah, for sure. The game is nothing without its players, and behind each so avatar makes it is the, a real person with thoughts, emotions, a story, and an impact. And each of them, in this episode, in those prior and future, play a crucial role on just why it became one of the most influential games in history, as it showcased the possibilities of a world within a world, and highlighted how it served as a medium to bring people together. Mm -hmm. Though some may be gone, let them never be forgotten, sure. and let their legacies be celebrated for the impact that they had on the game, its players, and the members of the communities they helped inspire Strong and community. grow. Damn, that was a roller coaster of a video. But it, I don't know. It's crazy how big of an impact for now, World of Warcraft and that whole community has had on everybody. Big part of my life as well, uh, as, a, as a personal thing, right? Damn. Yeah. Jesus. Check out the video from that season, guys. Um, maybe at some point we can check out the other parts of the uh, infamous players. Uh, I've never seen the other ones, but... There was a lot of big ones there, man. Like, there was a lot of big uh, big creators and big WoW, wow uh, players Bing and everything bong. there, man.